look at a few more details about actually working with things within the canvas. We're viewing this at 65% and I can zoom in by pressing Command plus to zoom in and Command minus to zoom out. If I use the rectangle tool here and just draw a few boxes, then you'll be able to see that a little bit more clearly zooming in and things get bigger. Because this is vector art, I can zoom in as much as I like and the lines will always stay smooth. I can also hold command and space and then click and drag to zoom in on a particular area. If I add option to that and click, I can zoom back out. Command plus and minus are probably more convenient and however I've zoomed, I can hold down just the space bar and drag around to get to exactly the area that I want. I never need to use the scroll bars if I hold space. The main selection tool is the tool you would use to select any object. As you hover over, a light blue outline appears, but clicking on the object shows you these corner handles to show you it's actually selected. When it's selected, I see if I'm adjusting the fill or the stroke by which is up front, and I can simply choose a new color from the swatches panel there. I could apply different colors to each of these by clicking on them in turn and just choosing different different colors for the fill. So how do I move these objects, select parts of them and get them around? It's with the main selection tool. I can click and drag to move a tool around, move uh, an object around. And if I drag to move it, I will see these smart guides appearing, which will tend to keep things in straight lines or to intersect things. So I could intersect the center point with the center of this line here, as well as the edge being lined up there. Now I'm going to make sure that my bounding box is shown. View show bounding box if it's not shown already. And you'll see bigger handles around the corners of your shape. When you move just outside the bounding box, you instantly get a rotation tool and you can rotate any object just on the standard selection tool. If you rotate and hold shift, then it will move in 45 degree increments from what you already had, which is quite useful to keep things square. As well as the main selection tool for moving and manipulating objects, you've got the sub selection or direct selection tool, known as sub selection in, uh, in Flash, and that's a good way to think of it. If you drag a box around a particular point, you'll see that anchor is not selected, this anchor is, and I can simply drag to move that around. So I can manipulate the edges of boxes as well as the boxes themselves. The lasso does something similar, except it selects in a freeform way. And it's only really very good for selecting. And then I'd need another tool to actually move them around. A few other basic tricks you'll want to know. If I start dragging something and then hold the option key, it will make a copy. So that's start dragging, hold the option key and watch the cursor change. There we go, makes a copy. You can combine that with shift. So option and shift will make a copy in a straight line. Command dragging is also a very useful technique. If I'm on the main, any shape tool, pretty much any tool, I will just simply keep on drawing circles. But if I hold down the command key, I temporarily get back to the main selection tool. So I can move an object around. So I might be drawing 10 circles and I simply want to move some around and draw some more, then that's no problem at all. Hold command for the move tool, for the selection tool and continue with the regular drawing of circles with the circle tool. The only other really important thing to note is undo. Whenever you've done something that you want to forget about, just press command Z. You've got lots and lots of undos. And if you take it too far, then you've got Command-Shift-Z for redo. 